Are you looking for an extraction-based multiplayer game like Escape from Tarkov but without all that intensity? Or are you looking for a fantasy game where you can team up with a warlock and a barbarian and take down hordes of skeletons and zombies? Well today I'll be reviewing Dark and Darker, a dungeon crawler multiplayer game with both PvP and PvE mechanics along with some RPG elements thrown into the mix. It's still in early access and was pulled from Steam among some controversy, but is it worth a play in its current state? This is Marco here from Easily Distracted Games helping you find new or old games that you can get lost in. So let's get started with today's new video. At first glance, Dark and Darker looks like a first person Diablo 2, but dig a little deeper and there's a lot going on here. Dark and Darker blends elements from role playing systems such as Dungeons and Dragons, while also belonging to the extraction subgenre of battle royales such as Apex Legends, PUBG, Fortnite, Escape from Tarkov and Call of Duty Warzone. It's a trend that grew on very quickly, but it is interesting seeing it being used in a fantasy type universe. All the games mentioned before had guns and grenades. Now we're talking fireballs and morning star maces. If this sounds like pure unadulterated chaos, then you're spot on because it is. But does that mean it's fun to play? If you're a big fantasy fan or like to delve into Dungeons and Dragons, this will be right down your alley. Players can select one of eight character classes, the fighter, barbarian, rogue, ranger, wizard, cleric, bard and warlock. There are other classes that are going to be hopefully added soon, like we can see the druid making an appearance here, but the devs are working on a few more to be added, which is something I'm looking forward to. The game features PvPVE or player versus player versus environment gameplay, where players can engage in combat against monsters to obtain valuable items all while remaining vigilant against potential threats from other players. This makes it especially hard for people new to the game, as you're not only trying to not die every few seconds by a skeleton with a sword, but you also have to survive the round with real players that only want your body to fall to the floor like a sack of potatoes. This does remind me a bit of Dark Souls, except with every few minutes highly skilled players jumping in and trying to one shot you. Surviving or escaping a match allows players to extract loot for future matches or can be sold or used for required quests. However, if you die during a match, you're going to be losing all of your possessions, the weapons and equipment that you've collected in that run. During the production of this video, there are currently only three maps available, the Solo, Duo and Trio that each come with a high roller option, allowing players to go in with any armor or weapons that they choose. With the standard maps, however, you can only enter with basic gear which prevents new players from getting stomped, but also reduces the chance of picking up high value items. Speaking of high value, if you're finding these reviews useful, perhaps consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already, or maybe just giving it a like or comment so other gamers can find great games. Before you begin playing, you'll need to create your own character. As it's still in early access, your options are somewhat limited, and don't even get me started on the fighter's haircut. You are able to switch between multiple characters while in your lobby, so you also don't need to worry about starting a whole new game just for that. Once you enter your mini lobby, you'll be seated with your own little three person table, allowing you to add up to two other extra players to your party. Then at the top, this is where you can access all the things such as your class, your stash, merchants, customizations and so on. The class tab here is where you can add or edit your skills, like every 5 levels you can add in an extra perk and these change depending on your chosen class. For example, the fighter comes with a second wind and stamina boost great for escaping those close encounters, or the barbarian's crush skill which allows him to smash down doors and containers roadhouse style. Some classes allow you to cast spells such as the cleric, the warlock and the wizard, and don't forget the bard who can learn various songs to help aid him or their allies during a battle. Then you have the travelers and the merchants. Now these characters will allow you to buy, sell and unlock rewards for completing various achievements. This adds some RPG element to the game as the quest starts simple like killing certain enemy types or providing the character with items from the run. But I feel like the devs need to work on some kind of tutorial system here. But yeah, completing these quests allow you to get certain rewards as well as allowing you to start with better base gear. 
In the customization tab, it allows you to, well, customize your player, such as your race, your item skins and emotes. You can unlock most of the races simply by playing the game, or you can fork out some dinero to buy the races or other items. Looking at the weapons available, there are quite a lot to choose from, but hopefully more can be added in soon. Each class comes with what you'd expect, so fighters get swords, barbarians get to swing around their axes, archers get bows and crossbows, wizards, warlocks, clerics, they get their spell books, and bards, well, they get their whole band set up. And yeah, of course you can find the rare items of all of these. You'll find these weapons during your runs or through various merchants. Just don't lose them in a run else they're gone for good. You'll notice that the maps display solo, duo or trio indicating the maximum number that your group can play in that map. So for instance, as a solo player, you can join the duo or trio maps, but just be prepared for facing teams of two or three. However, the loot is better. So this adds some interesting decisions to make. I'll be honest, the maps can feel somewhat repetitive and they are not randomly generated. So skilled players will know these maps back to front, but there are multiple levels, underwater areas, lava sections and more just to spice things up. Then come the high roller maps. These maps drop way better loot, but also spawn elite monsters and there's no limit to what people can bring in with them into the game. So expect some really skilled players with armor that look like it was crafted from God himself. So I'd only recommend jumping into these once you have a really firm grip of how to play the game. Hitting begin, you'll soon be transported into a lobby where it'll take a minute or two to fill it up, which is currently around a maximum of eight players. I didn't experience any waiting time issues here, but some people have experienced some issues with the latest gear based update. Okay, great. So time to start actually playing the game. You start in a random position on the map and now need to navigate your way to either a blue or red portal. Along the way, you'll need to kill enemies either from the environment or the other actual players. You'll also need to find dank loot from chests, pots, wooden crates, etc. that you can then sell or give to those merchants or traders mentioned earlier. And that's if you survive. PVE enemies seem challenging at first, but the AI is predictable, like very predictable, like the ending of a cheesy romance predictable, to the point where once you learn their attack patterns, killing them just kind of becomes an annoyance. You get the standard range of D&D-esque type enemies such as the skeletons, zombies, goblins, spiders, bats, big bugs, flying bugs, wraiths and more. And there are also big bosses in the game too, like the troll where once you defeat him on the solo map, drop even better loot. However, they can be extremely hard to kill even for experienced players. The other enemies that you face are PvP, so other players like yourself. Most are pretty good, and I found it very hard to kill 90% of them in the beginning while I started playing. If you get hit, you can use bandages, health potions, or help from the healers in your party. To heal your healable health, as displayed in the not so red section of your health bar, you can just sit on the ground or use a bandage. This takes forever as a new player, and you run the risk of getting killed pretty easily. So try and get other players on your team, like the, say the bar, just to make you heal quicker. But most of my single player experience in the beginning was just, yeah, sitting on the ground in the dark, listening to creepy noises and hoping another player won't see me. 10 out of 10 gameplay right there. Cool, so now you're busy going through the game, hopefully surviving more than two minutes. Eventually you'll notice in the bottom right corner of the screen that there's a timer, as well as a circle slowly getting smaller on your map. If you're outside of that circle, you'll be met with those swarm of nasties, which will slowly kill you, but not as bad as other games in the genre. Actual combat is quite basic. Most weapons come with a three move combo, but once you're attacking, you're fully committed. There's no feigning or canceling of attacks, but there is still plenty of skill required here. Don't get me wrong. For example, hitting players in the head does way more damage than other body parts. And dodging is crazy as you'll need to duck, bob and weave like a boxer. And it's really hard to do this in first person. These mechanics are vital for survival, but hilarious to see in person. You're also extremely slow here, especially when equipped with armor. For example, my one friend took me into a room and said, just take off your pants. I told him, sorry, I'm already taken, but he said, no, this is to make you run faster. 
Moving backwards is also not recommended, so strafing left and right or kiting is the best method for dodging enemies. This makes the game even more challenging. I mean, I'm used to sprinting or at least having the ability to easily dodge attacks, but my gosh, this close quarter combat here is exhilarating and intense. To escape, you'll need to wait for a blue portal to appear, which you can identify either on the map or you can hear this sound coming out of the ground. You can also enter the red portal, which takes you to hell. No jokes. Here the enemies are way harder and should be a last ditch effort if you have no other option. But yeah, escaping the map is not easy and don't be despondent if you can't do it after multiple attempts. Dark and Darker reminded me a bit of Elden Ring in terms of initial difficulty. You are very squishy, so dying is very common, even against the PvE mobs. Playing solo can put many players off, as the game is most fun when played with others, especially ones who are somewhat experienced in the game. Honestly, the first time playing, I had two pro players that basically carried me through the first few runs. Now let's touch a bit on the current state of the game. It's just currently the wild west right now. The devs love tweaking the settings, which often comes with a wipe of your progress. They also enjoy changing various mechanics to make it more fun, but the constant snip snap snip snap means hardcore players might have to constantly learn new mechanics or broken meta. But this hopefully shows that the devs are listening to their player base, especially thanks to their test server. In terms of enjoyment, the single player experience didn't pull me in too much and I couldn't get past playing say a few hours and then eventually quitting. However, playing this with friends is another story altogether. So many hilarious moments, especially for new players, where you're constantly trying to not die, dodge enemies and run away from the other players or even injuring your own teammates. There's just so much going on. Nice. Okay. Got him, dude. Replayability wise, it's hard to say. It does start to feel a bit repetitive unless you're playing with friends. The devs are busy testing new gameplay mechanics on their test server, such as the potential multi-class mechanic, but I do feel like more components need to be added or streamlined to keep players coming back for more. The player count too is pretty decent. You'll often find many people complaining that it's a dead game, but I don't really agree here, as there are still thousands of players who return to it daily. Yes, it's not on Steam at the moment, but uh, I'll, I'll get to that shortly. Jumping into the performance, the game runs relatively smoothly, but with my i5 laptop with its NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070, I didn't experience any major issues. There were some bugs, one or two crashes here and there, but it's, uh... It's an early access game, and there are plenty of hotfixes released every few days. The graphics, well, they're pretty bad, even on full. Comparing it to other games in the genre, it just feels like you're playing Diablo 2, but in first person. It's also very, very, very dark, like good work on the title of this game. It does make it a lot more challenging to play, with some places that are just way too dark and you have to end up throwing your torch on the floor, but just be sure to pick it up again as yeah, no more light for you. Enemy models are okay, but yeah, I just felt like they can be improved upon and that zombie fart gas just makes it all look out of place. Yes, the maps are different, but damn, they can get a bit boring as everything eventually starts to look the same. But then we jump onto the sounds and that's a different matter altogether. This game is all about that sound. Simply stop for a few seconds and you'll be sure to hear some very creepy noises. It's quite easy to identify the enemies and other players too. The chings of your weapon clanking against the various enemy types is always just so satisfying and your weapons are just always feeling that weightiness to them. As mentioned, there is some controversy thrown in here. 
Mid-February 2023, it was reported that the South Korean video game company Nexon alleged that Dark and Darker had similarities to an ongoing development of a game that was tentatively titled as P3 internally. Lots of back and forth, Iron May Studios getting raided by the police and so on. Then in April 2023, Iron May requested Steam to reinstate Dark and Darker back to its store, claiming that the copyright infringements came by Nexon were meritless. However, in August 2023, and the American court case was dismissed. It's now April 2024, so waiting for it to come back to Steam, I wouldn't really get your hopes up anytime soon. Now, as a reminder, this game is still in early access, so it might change quite a bit if you're watching this video at a later stage. However, I 100% recommend playing this game, but it might not be for everyone. It's hard, especially when you're learning the game all by yourself, but it's not as skill intensive as a game like Escape from Tarkov. You can just tell by some of its wacky gameplay that there is a bigger emphasis on just simply having fun here. Yes, the higher ranked players might have their own opinion here, but damn, play this with a bunch of friends and you'll definitely get so many hours worth of fun and enjoyment. And that's just it. Playing the game solo, I would not recommend it. And especially if you're not a fan of these fantasy type games. But honestly, if you're looking for a D&D &D multiplayer game to play with friends, this is the game for you. And if you enjoyed this video, perhaps watch one of my others. Who knows, you might find a game that you can get lost in. But other than that, it is Marco here from Easily Distracted Games. And most of all, don't stop gaming. <laughs>